Let's take a look at some information and charts on Yearn Finance Wi-Fi for Brave New Coin. So the Wi-Fi protocol is multiple products here that allow for lending aggregation, yield generation, and insurance on the ETH blockchain, maintained by developers and governed by Wi-Fi holders. And that's where one of the use cases for Wi-Fi comes into play, the other being speculation, of course. If we look at the core products, Vaults, Earn, Zap, Cover, which is the insurance underwritten by Nexus Mutual, as well as Governance. And if we look at the website itself, it's pretty easy to use and intuitive. You connect to your MetaMask or hardware wallet and deposit into the smart contract into the Vault in this case. And you can earn an APY on various coins individually. So this isn't necessarily pooling like an AMM. It is aggregating the yield on various places. So it's putting your, your money to work, WBTC, USDC, whatever it is, the, uh, wrapped ETH, ETH, and allowing you to earn a passive income there. And just looking at the uh, historic rates for USDC across a few, a few platforms, you can see how variable they tend to be. So in a protocol like Wi-Fi, is definitely useful and has a decent use case in its own right. It's the coin itself that I have trouble getting behind. There are however many of them allowing for a very large coin price individually. So it's it's just a bit weird on several levels. The biggest issue is just being the use case considerations. If we look at the transaction counts for the token, transaction counts had been falling since April and then rising a little bit since early April. So this could help explain some of the explosion in price. I think from what I read, it was also being involved with farming and some of the Doge clones or something. I don't know. There's some scammy related reason that price was exploding, which just led me to assume that whatever price action is going on isn't sustainable or able to be held by the market because those scams are going to fall eventually. And sure enough, both so far has come true, even though Doge is still at 50 cents. But anyway, transaction counts rising. So that's bullish for anything. Average transaction value is also on the rise since April. So a bit of a, a wake up all around for the token itself on that front. NVT, inverse metric of economic utility, since March and April has really been all over the place. And it's hard to really know if these on-chain metrics, which were built for proof of work coins, realistically, really even matter for something like Yearn or governance tokens in general across DeFi. Um, looking at this, it's hard to even interpret what's going on, but since May, on-chain activity has been rising relative to market cap, so that's why NVT is falling and telling you this is a bullish environment for uh, Wi-Fi. Active addresses, however, continue to slowly decline, but again, does that even matter? This is just the token. This isn't necessarily the platform. If we look at TVL, though, total value locked across V1, V2, everything on the urine ecosystem, it continues to rise now at $4.38 billion. A lot of that through uh, V2 at the moment. So it's hard to be bearish on the protocol, the platform, that specific use case. It's the governance token itself that I have a hard time getting behind. And here's Google Trends for uh, DeFi crypto over the past 12 months, just some random phrase to sort of quantify the insanity that's going on. We're continuing to hit all-time highs, continuing to. So it's hard to be bearish on anything DeFi when we're seeing stuff like this, when we're seeing yields that remain high, uh, yield farming phrase also sitting at all-time highs relative to worldwide over the past 12 months. So still a ton of searches, activity, people looking into yield farming, DeFi, uh, Singapore, Hong Kong, still popular in Asia. Shout out to New Zealand, BNC, TCAP. So still a lot of activity there. Uh, it's just the token price. I just, I don't understand the, the use case for the token specifically. Since November though, the price has kind of held the same channel as Uni USD, the Uniswap governance token in that it just is holding this rising channel, put in an all-time high at around 84K over the past week and has come down some since then. But 
this channel has held decently well. If we pop on MAs, you can see, okay, it's snaking mainly on the north side of the 50 and the 200. So overall on the 12 hour, which is a high time frame for something that's only been around since September 2020, trend metrics have been favorable. So as much as I'm bearish on the, the reality that is Wi-Fi, the trend metrics look favorable and continue to look favorable. There's support here at the yearly pivot at the 50 12 hour EMA. And then below that, there's support around 45K based on VPVR yearly, uh, monthly pivot, sorry, and uh, the 200 period EMA. And then below that, really it's 32, 33K where that level would really need to hold. That's if, if DeFi collectively crumbles, which doesn't look like that's going to be the case just yet. Looking at the cloud, uh, when I see a cloud picture that looks like this in that it's snaked in and out of the cloud multiple times per month on a high time frame, I usually just throw it out at that point because that tells me that this metric for this pair on this time frame just really isn't helpful, you know, it's telling you to get in here, get out here, 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 get back in. And now it's telling you a mixture of things, none of which are particularly super bullish, but it's on the north side of the cloud still. So it still looks okay, even down to 50K or slightly lower, it should be okay. It's just not too useful. I'd much rather just look at this and say, okay, it's still on the channel. It looks fine. If you look at Wi-Fi BTC though, there's a very clear downtrend here, sort of an a, a descending triangle that didn't break down. And if we pop on the 200 period moving average as well, when it finally was able to get above both of those, metrics, it finally moved decently against BTC. Now it's had movements here that were sort of mean reversion thrusts, but it hasn't really moved on its own relative to BTC. So this is kind of been the first time over the past few weeks that it's done anything. It had this rising wedge characteristic with trend metrics on its side, and then it exploded being priced above BTC. So it's 1.43 BTC currently. That has a lot to do with the total circulating supply, but trend metrics still look okay on uh, Wi-Fi BTC down to 1.19 or something as far as this key June is concerned. So it's got some time to figure out. I think the trade is gone. And if, if I was looking at this in a vacuum, you know, you want to get in back here when it's telling you to get in, not when it's already moved. Um, Wi-Fi ETH though, if you compare the two charts, waiting, 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 Okay, let's get long. Okay, let's get out of our long. We got the move to ETH where we're still waiting, 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 but we're getting there. We're getting there to the point where Wi-Fi against ETH is ready to break out in a bullish fashion. And you can see that every single attempt at reversal has been denied. <laughs> so charts like this are actually encouraging uh, for this DeFi stuff against ETH, against BTC. That looks fine. Um, it's against these USD charts that they look heavy, but they don't look bearish. You know, they look like they hit the top side of their, their bull trend if they were in a channel and they look ready to just relax for a little bit longer. Lastly, I'll just mention the enzyme.finance, ETH BTC and DeFi portfolios on enzyme non-custodial portfolio management. You can see allocation, performance, deposits, withdrawals, trades, all of it's done through DEXs and smart contracts. Uh, Wi-Fi isn't in the DeFi portfolio, mainly because of my own reservations against the purpose of the token. Um, so it's tough. It's a tough buy for me relative to everything else. It doesn't really fit in the buckets of DEXs, DEX aggregation, lending and borrowing, oracles, and then miscellaneous. I guess you could categorize it under miscellaneous because it kind of fits everything. It's not AMM, but it's AMM like. It's not lending and borrowing, but it lend, lends and borrow or lends out to um, all of this DeFi stuff. Just for me, the, the purpose of the token itself is a bit iffy. So let me know if you think I'm too bearish on Wi Fi as far as what it is on the fundamental side of things in the comments below. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.